Hi, I'm Alorain, your urology guide today. If you're a man in your 50s or beyond and you've ever wondered what's actually normal, you're in the right place. We're going to put numbers in context, show you how to measure correctly so you aren't comparing apples to oranges, and focus on the practical steps that truly improve confidence, blood flow, and performance. Take a breath before we start. Most men who worry about size are already in the medical normal range. The biggest drivers of anxiety aren't biology, they're camera angles, selective casting, and internet myths. In real life, partners value comfort, communication, timing, and care far more than chasing an extra half inch on a ruler. Let's get precise. For length, use a ruler or firm tape and measure from the pubic bone to the tip of the glands. That means gently pressing through the fat pad until you feel the bone. Don't measure from the skin. Keep the ruler on top, aligned with the shaft. You can record erect length or flaccid stretched length, which is when you pull the shaft straight, firmly but not painfully, while flaccid. This strongly correlates with erect length in research. For girth, wrap a soft tape or a string around the mid shaft, not at the base, not near the tip, then read where it meets. Take two or three measurements in a warm room, standing, and average them. If you carry extra weight around the lower belly, know that fat at the base can hide visible length. Trimming that can make more of the shaft visible without changing the anatomy itself. What do large studies actually show? When researchers pooled data from thousands of men worldwide, they found that roughly nine out of 10 fall between about four and six plus inches, around 10 to 16 centimeters in length when erect or flaccid stretched with a global average a bit over five inches. Erect girth typically lands around 3.9 to 5.1 inches, about 10 to 13 centimeters with an average near 4.5 inches. On the far ends, clinical definitions like micropenis and macropenis describe rare outliers. They don't define health, masculinity, or relationship quality. These numbers are signposts, not verdicts. Use them to stop the comparison spiral and focus on the controllables that matter more after 50. Circulation, pelvic floor strength, sleep, stress, and communication. If you'd like a practical way to build support where it counts, consider adding guided pelvic floor training at home. A compact trainer can cue the right muscles, guide timing so you don't guess, and help you build endurance that supports blood flow, firmness, and control. Check the pinned comment for the link when you're ready to start a simple five to seven minute routine that fits any day. If this video helps you already, hit like so more men see clear information instead of myths and say hello in the comments with the biggest misconception you've run into, I read everyone. Let's clear up common measurement mistakes and head games. Don't compare your flaccid look to someone else's erect state. Temperature, nerves, and lighting change everything. Don't measure from underneath. It inflates numbers that won't match clinical data. Don't ignore girth. Partners often describe comfort and fullness primarily by circumference plus technique. And don't obsess over daily fluctuations. Measure under similar conditions every few weeks to get a true baseline. Simple habits make numbers consistent. Warm room, standing posture, same device, calm breathing, and a slow, steady approach. What about enhancement? It's normal to be curious, but it's vital to separate medical facts from marketing. For girth, the best studied cosmetic option uses hyaluronic acid fillers placed by an experienced urologist or plastic surgeon. Results can add roughly two to three centimeters of circumference and usually last a year to a year and a half as the material is gradually absorbed. Upsides include reversibility and adjustability. Downsides include maintenance and the need for a skilled injector. Be cautious with permanent fillers like industrial silicone or PMMA. They carry higher risks of chronic inflammation, nodules, and tissue damage. For length, options are limited and don't change erect size in a meaningful, predictable way. Liposuction above the base can reveal more of the shaft by reducing the fat pad, but doesn't lengthen the organ. 
Cutting the suspensory ligament may increase relaxed visible length, but not erect length, and can reduce stability during intercourse. Penile implants are powerful medical treatments for erectile dysfunction after conservative therapies fail. They are not cosmetic lengtheners. The good news is that the biggest performance wins come from upgrading the system, not chasing a measurement. Cardiovascular fitness supports arterial health. Strength training improves insulin sensitivity and nitric oxide pathways. Pelvic floor practice strengthens the muscular seal that helps trap blood, and smart stress control removes the breaks that anxiety puts on arousal. Think of your routine as a simple weekly rhythm. Walk most days, lift two or three times focusing on hinge, squat, push, and pull, and practice pelvic floor contractions for a few minutes a day. Short, crisp pulses for power, slower holds for endurance, and full relaxations for sensitivity. Add seven to eight hours of sleep and a calm wind down, and your body will often respond with better morning erections, steadier performance, and more confidence. If you want to support this evidence-based men's health content, consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss new guides. Members and sponsors help me produce deeper tutorials and interviews, and I prioritize member questions in upcoming videos. If you feel this could help a friend or son who might be quietly worrying, share it. The right information replaces shame with a plan. A few quick technique upgrades you can start today. Do a gentle warm-up with a shower or heating pad for three to five minutes to improve tissue comfort. Use long, easy exhales to keep the body out of fight or flight. Run 10 quick pelvic floor contractions, five slow five-second holds, and five full relaxations, and walk for 10 minutes after dinner to stabilize blood sugar and support nighttime recovery. Hydrate through the day and taper fluids two hours before bed to reduce bathroom trips that interrupt sleep. Foods rich in magnesium and natural nitric oxide precursors, think leafy greens, beets, and watermelon, can support your routine. Discuss any supplement ideas with your clinician before starting. History adds perspective. In ancient Greek art, idealized male figures were often depicted with modest anatomy to signal self-control and wisdom. Today's media rewards extremes because extremes get clicks. Neither era changes biology. What matters most is the combination of health, communication, technique, and care for your partner. You can build all of that at any age with small practices that compound. When should you talk with a clinician? New pain or curvature? Persistent erectile difficulties for more than three months? Loss of morning erections? Or urinary changes like a weak stream deserve professional attention? Size worries inside the normal ranges rarely require a procedure. They respond far better to blood flow habits, pelvic floor training, stress skills, and relationship tools. If you've been nodding along and want a clear starting point, check the pinned comment for the home trainer I mentioned and begin a short daily routine you can actually stick with. Small consistency beats heroic one-offs every time. If this resonated, like the video, subscribe, and consider becoming a sponsor or sending a small gift using the super thanks button. Your support lets me keep everything science first and free of hype. Drop a comment with the single action you'll take this week. Sharing your plan helps other men get moving too. You are not your measurements. You are your habits, your consistency, your attention to your partner, and your willingness to care for your health. I am an AI urologist drawing on publicly available sources. This video is for educational purposes only and is not medical advice. Do not start, stop, or change any treatment based on this video. Always consult your own urologist or primary care clinician for guidance tailored to you.